Hello, good day, and welcome back. So, last time we were talking about struts, and specifically, we did an introduction to structures, and then we talk about how they're like arrays in a way, um, in that you can use multiple values to kind of put them together, so we have combined value, but they're not quite like maps, um, but they have better flexibilities than arrays, where arrays you have all elements are of the same type, and even with a map, you have all elements of the same type, but a map was kind of a little bit more flexible than an array in that your index can be a string or a number, but still your index or had to be of the same type. With a struct, you sort of be, had this, really, everything was just open in that what we use to access fields of the struct, we call them um, the field name, and those um, just, you know, whatever uh, identifier you wanted to use that made sense. And so we had like name and age as our field names, for example. And though the field names are different and, you know, uh, identif and are ident identifiers, they can point to different things within that struct. So name would point to a string that has the value Mary, and age, for example, would make sense to point to an integer that had... Um, a totally different value and for example you can also have a field name in this example where it was exempt and there was also a different type of values and you can have multiple fields of the same type provided that they had different names so we played around with that and we saw how to access a struct and you know um, iterate over it so we saw that the range operator worked just the same on struct as it does on its um, a slice of struct in our example and solution that we, we, we um that we worked on and so now we're going to look at how you can do nested and anonymous structs and first of all we're going to look at nested structures and then how to use those and then we're going to talk about anonymous structures and maybe some of the benefit of it um, or the benefit it gives you and then of course we have to talk about you know how you access the fields in an anonymous structure Anonymous simply means that you don't give it a name, um, so uh, we're going to see that. And all you can do with ambi ambi yeah, ambiguities um, that, you know, if you have nested structure with the same, sharing the same name, we'll see that, um, all you do with ambiguities. All right, so let's um, save this off and then um, close it, and then let's look at where we left off. So we left off here, and this is the code from last week where we learned about what a structure is what it looks like and we kind of built up to this where we were able to give it a name and then we went through and replaced everywhere we were using a structure literal which is where you actually type struct here and specify the fields and we use a type and then we saw how that made things easier and this is how you access it to assign it and then this is how you access it to print it out where um Oh, well, I didn't have that in here, but I add that in our stub, which was the exercise. So P, that name is how you access those fields. And you had some ex exercise to do to do these um, to do. So let's call that to do one and to do two. OK, now, if you look, you'll see here that um, I have this little icon here to tell me two to do's in this file. And that's because um, I have a plugin. Um, for that so if you want to be able to have that and easily navigate your to do's just um, go install this to do parser here right uh, this is what I'm using but there are multiple if you type to do um, you'll see a few of them come up and the one I'm using is this one okay but feel free to use one if you like or none and any one if you want to and so this wouldn't work because we still had to complete it and so the solution for this exercise is here. And basically, we want to create a slice of person containing three person. And there's our slice. And you could think of it as a nil slice, right? If you print it out, this doesn't have an underlying array to back it. And so we can create a person. So we declare a variable. But again, this is nil. And so um, we can know allocate a person with these properties and assign them to P, and then now we can append P. 
Now, because even though we start now with a nil slice, we know how the append function takes care of that. It grows it and so on. So we went through all that when we talk about slices. So I didn't have to do a make slice first. If okay, I made a slice, it would have, uh, after define an array, and basically, as I append onto it, I'd have some empty um, persons in there. So I didn't, I didn't want that. So I start off with a nil um, slice and just append onto it, and then we iterate and print it out. So that was pretty, hopefully, I think, a simple exercise, but it gives you some practice using slices. So we're going to start off with this exact same code that we have here. And well, let's close this. And so I have that code here for section two. And so this is where we're going to start today, okay? With exactly where we left off um, last week. So what do we want to talk about? We said we we're going to talk about nested slices. So nested structure, sorry. So if you look at this, you're going to see that though we have this person struct, and it seems that it has many concerns. Not only do they have information about a person, but it has information about street and so on. And the, the address will be specific, right? This is the address. So if this is the address, it seems like we should really pull this out to be its own structure. Um, so why don't we do that, right? So why don't we say type address, you know, and we can have something like that. So the advantage of this now is not only that we're not coupling too many things together, but we can also, it's not a person alone that can have an address, but a business can also have an address. So we can have another struct called business and also reuse address with that. So there are normal ways now we have these separated, we can use it, but one of the things we might still want to be able to do is say that a person has an address, and so we might still want to be able to say something like this, okay? Um, so that still give us sort of the benefit we had before, except now things are much better organized. And here, of course, we should really provide a nice comment that says address um, <coughs> defines the fields for, uh, for an address, you know. Um, okay, I know that doesn't make much sense, but um, it's going to get rid of the wiggly line warning you about um, thing. So now this is saying um, unexpected open parentheses. Uh, oh, well, of course, we didn't say this as a struct. So there we go. And so that seems to, once that's saved, that's going to go away. Um, what about zip? So sometimes zip code looks something like, um, you know, let's say one, two, three, four, five, dash, and then have these four digits um, coming after it, like a mailbox, right? So if we wanted to capture that, we can certainly say in our address, we have something like the zip, and then whatever that other thing is. I don't know what it's called. Uh, I'm going to call it code here, for example. Um, but you might say, well, why don't we, and you don't have to again, but why don't we for the, um, pull this out as its own type called a zip, and of course this is a struct, and like that, okay? And we're going to say that though, um, a zip code looks something like this, okay? Um, bam, bam, a zip code. All right, example zip code. All right, so, um, so now when we print it out, maybe we might want to print it like this, but we want to represent the two things separately because we know that zip codes are not always of this format. It's basically five digits, and then you might also have this, um, this uh, mailbox code or mailbox number. I don't know exactly know what they call that last four, but you've, seen, you, you, you've probably seen it, okay? And so now... We've, we have this thing ni nicely pulled out like this, but our address still needs a zip code, so we say zip, and this is a zip. Okay, so uh, that's looking um, pretty good now in terms of we, ought to, or we were able to sort of break those out more sensibly. Um, but here, we have a problem with um, how we're defining our um, instance, our object, right, our variables. So let's put some space here so we can kind of manage things here. And so what it looks like is that within a person, you have this nested object um, structure call or layout of data call an address. So it seems that this is its own thing, right? Um, like these guys, this is, a, this is an address. So if it's an address, we should encapsulate it, okay? And when we encapsulate it, we still need to say what it is. So there we go. 
we can say this is an address. All right? And here, what we have is also something that's nested inside of, of an address, and that's the zip code, right? So we should also specify this as a zip code, and so it's nested inside of address, and so it too is its own object, and so what type of object is it? It's zip, right? But our zip has two fields, right? And if you go here, it's going to set two few values. Uh, you know, if you want, we can um, do this and say that we're talking specifically of the zip um, value there, um, something like that, right? Um, and now we're leaving the other value unspecified. Um, so we can do that, or we can just simply say we want to specify both values and so we're going to do that that when we say comma um, empty string and maybe in this one we want to use 1.015 and maybe here we want to use 2 1 I don't know whatever I'll leave that one empty okay so fine so now um, we okay just to get rid of this little squiggly line we're going to do zip um, that's it. Zip is a <laughs> zip code. That's so silly, right? But whatever. All right, so now this is, of course, wrong now because we don't have P that city and P that state anymore. So how do we access this nested? Um, so here we have this nested structure, right? Um, so we have a field whose value is another structure. That's what we have. And so... To access that, of course, it makes sense now. You can see it now. We just use this name, address. So we just say address. And then, of course, stated an address also. So we can say address, that state, right? And so now we have p that name, which comes from the person, person that name. And then to get to the nested city and state, we have to go through address. So that's that. And so let's run this. Yeah, we don't have any error now, but. Let's run it anyway, and uh, this is working the same way, and it seems to work just fine. Okay. Now let's change things up a little bit, and let's change the formatting from this to let's put a comma here, and then we we'll put um, state and the zip. All right. So we can do this, and we'll do this p that, and now if we want to get to the zip, we have to go through address first, then we have to go through the zip. And then we get to the actual zip, okay? Um, so I know that looks a little bit weird, but um, let's bear with that for a minute. And so we'll put that that way. And now we're going to rerun. And now we have something that looks like this, okay? So now you can see that if you have nested structures, all you have to do is quite literally navigate it by using the dot operator to get to the fields. So you get the object field, and then you keep going down, okay? So hopefully that shouldn't be rocket science for you, and it's trying to make some kind of sense right now. Here it looks weird because we actually call this member zip, and it has a property called zip, but okay. Um, so maybe this is the actual code, and then this is something else. Maybe this is the code, and then this is the mailbox, PO box. PO box, um, PO, so uh, PO box, let's put a PO box, and so let's put code, all right, and so, okay, so that, that's fine, um, and then let's rerun this, and it works fine, all right, zip that code, can look much better now, all right, good, so what about, and so this is nested structures, access in nested structure, what about Anonymous structures. Well, anonymous means you don't give it a name. So we can take this out and we can take this out. And so what we're saying is that person is these things plus this thing, this other struct. But we don't give a name to what this other thing is, what is this, um, this other nested structure is. We're just basically saying, basically, um, I want 
person to be to have the layout of name, age, social security number, plus all this stuff, which is the, exactly the same layout that we had in section one, in, in uh, section one of this chapter, except that I want to group those set of fields by this, right? And I don't want to give it a name. And same here, I want zip um, address to have, you know, all the these fields plus that's from zip, but again, I don't want to name it. And so what happens now when you do this? Well, of course, there's no address, so that goes away. And then there's no address, and there's no zip. So, and of course, there's no address, so we can't use that. So the thing is, would this actually work? And we'll see that how it does work. And so p.name looks in the, the, the object we're talking about, and it finds name. And p that city, and it says, oh, city is not in here. Let me look in a, a nano structure that I have, and it sees that it's there, so it finds it there. And p that code, and so it doesn't find it in address, but it finds it in, you know, it's, so the fields are promoted. Think of the fields as promoted in that these two values are promoted to being in here in address, and then all the address fields are promoted and in here. Okay. So let's run this now and see if this works. And so you can see it still works fine. All right. Now, so that's how you do access fields in an anonymous structure. And you still get the same readability of, you know, breaking things, things down into pieces that are more re readable and reusable because you could just still reuse address by itself or address with business and a person can have multiple addresses and you can have an array of addresses and all these other sort of things you couldn't have when you just buried address directly inside of person. But now, as you can see, um, you also um, get to have the fields promoted and use them that way. But what happens if you have multiple fields with the same name? I'm talking specifically of if you uh, did something like this. Let's say for both of these structure, we had a name string field, okay? So now both my, all three of my structures have a name field, okay? So of course, defining it is um, a little incorrect now because address has an extra um, field. And so let's assume that we call this address one. And then this is zip one. And, and this is totally contrived, okay? I just wanted to show you if you have this ambiguity where ambiguity of, um, you know, things having names that are, prop fields that are reused or that are promoted and now you don't know which one you need to access. So zip one, I think like I'm tongue tied today. I can't even pronounce the word ambiguity um, without some difficulty. Um, so address, three and then zip three okay totally contrived let's just say that that's what we have and so when that's saved it should be fine and so now when we run this what should we access which name should show up well it's still the name on the person because that's the most top level thing that's defined so that's what you want but how do you get to the name of these address how do I say which address I'm using. So let's say I wanted to put, um, you know, percent V here, the address, and then, you know, square bracket around um, something like that, okay? And so now I need to put in the name for the address. So I have to say P that address, and so I just use the name of the struct, and then I can say name, okay? So, in lieu of when you need to sort out ambiguity, you just use the struct name. And so there we go. And now I can rerun this. And now I have address one, address two, and address three. And there's no ambiguity when I say p that name, it refers to the name that's in p. It makes sense. And then p that address that name refers to the name that's inside of address. And you can do the same thing if you wanted to access the zip. So for example, um, I'm going to put the zip name here. That's a word. Zip name percent V. And along at the end is where I'm going to put that. And I'm going to say P that address. 
um, I can even um, do that name, okay? <laughs> and so, um, run this, it's save, and there we go. Zip one, zip, you know. Um, okay, maybe I have more than one zip one. Oh, there it is, zip two, okay? So when that save, I'll run again, and bam, it works, right? Um, you know, you might say, well, okay, why can I, can I do it like this? Oh, yeah, why not? But notice how Zip was promoted in um, in name, in person, so I didn't have to go through all that way. It just saved me some typing. So whichever one works for you or you feel like you need to save, but as you can see, that at least I could resolve and get to those nested names, okay? So I think this is a lot, uh, well, enough, um, not too much but it certainly introduces some new concept. And again, what we talk about is nested structures, name nested structures, and anonymous nested structures, and how to resolve ambiguities, right? Ambiguities, okay. So, in names that are promoted inside of a structure. And so for our exercise, um, homework, um, example is going to be um, something like this. So you have these already. And, you know, they're, 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 they're named for now, but it doesn't really matter because you know to deal with that. And so, uh, let's then make them on name. Okay. Um, yeah, make them on anonymous structure. Let's do that. And take that out. And so, what I'd like is for you to instead of using a slice use a map which is going to map a string to a person and essentially what we want to really do is use the person name to find their information like think of it like a database poor man's database where you put in the person name as a string and you get out all this other information about them and of course so that's one is defining the variable per p people that's of map mapping a string to a person then of course you have to allocate the map and then you're going to start storing each one of these person P into the map here, here, and here. Okay? And then have it printed out. And that's it. And so this part here is, you know, already done for you essentially, which is, this is not the part of the to-do really. Um, store tree individuals into a map. That part is already done for you. Ah, that's already done. Because I have to find the thing. Well, I guess... It's part of the to-do, yeah, because you still have to store them inside in the map. Okay, so I'll leave that. And I notice here it shows me my six to-dos and where I can find them, okay, if you have that plugin. Okay, so, and then, you know, it's going to print out, and, then, you know, uh, just you should be comfortable understanding how we range over the map of people, okay? Um, so do that if you're curious or you just want to look at the solution. Of course, the solution is there. So you can check that out. All right. Take care. Thanks for your time. Continue to um, subscribe, um, to, to, to review the videos, work on them, and continue to spread the word, please. Thank you very much. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And for those who are already subscribed, thank you very, very much. And I appreciate you taking your time to um, come and watch my videos. Take care. Bye. See you in the next video.